Six seems objectively powerful and it's a continuation of something that was last season, which is always where you want to start in a rotated format. Check out the things that were good before, probably still good. That's my overlay looks good, sweet. Okay. Hopefully our hero will not fall this game. That would be bad for us. Dreadmon, so my opponent's playing a new champion. Whenever they play an underworld troop, they gain a charge, and for six charges, all their troops get plus one, plus one to end of turn. Uh, 10 out of 10, offering the trade of the Righteous Outlaw for the Dread Botanist here. Would love to trade these rather than get Hero Fall and take two cards in my hand. I don't think we can just do nothing this turn. I think that seems like a pretty losing proposition. There's no, no guarantee they have Hero Fall. If they do hero fall us, we've got two Lantern Paw Sites in our hand, so we can, like, generate back some of the card advantage that they're going to get by hero falling our guy out. God, this guy is so dead. Please be strangled, please be strangled, please be strangled. I am so confused right now. So this card... Oh, this doesn't have speed. Okay, weird. Okay, uh, so... Every time the Righteous Outlaw readies, he does one of two things. He either generates a Valor, or he transforms into the Scarlet Swordsman. And when the Scarlet Swordsman attacks for the first time, he does damage equal to his power to my opponent and one of their troops. So... This is going to deal 2 damage here and 2 damage to my opponent. And we'll see if they want to trade with this one this time. I feel like if their play was just uh, play Runer Hierophant on 3 there, they really should have traded this Dread Botanist with this, girl, with this Righteous Outlaw last turn. Yeah. Yeah, and like, now they're trading for it here. So, they definitely should have traded last turn rather than losing the Runer Hierophant to it and taking extra damage. Easy, easy mistake to make, like Righteous Outlaw, new card, you know, people often, often make sequencing mistakes like that when they're not used to playing into things. Get hit for the old six ball here. Let's scrounge as a troop. And if you scrounge, you make three dreadlings, those go away. Alright, what am I doing here? I think it's just like Lanu Paws Sight, Champ Power... Oh, like so flooded on these. Can you get on 25 resources in this deck? Whoa, wait, what? <laughs> That's weird. It asked me to target even though it doesn't have a thing. Strange. Yeah, I agree, Hawk. Opponent's play was uh, questionable there. Probably, like I said, just a result of not being familiar with the cards. Another Dread Apprentice, sure. They can straight race here. Get us down to nine. So you pick up a love a shard. That's uh, one drop that came trips at least. And do a shard. Perfect. Uh, let's do this. And all these draw extra cards because of our landing post site that we'd played previously. Uh, now the question becomes do I want to jam this righteous outlaw? Yeah, I think I do. I want to just jam him in here. And if he wants to trade this for this, I'm fine with that. Hey, Waffle, what's going on? Yeah, we were playing. I spent most of the day testing for the CCS. Um, and I uh, really, really like this deck. This is one of our Gauntlet decks. I actually wrote about this. Uh, it'll be going up on HexCCG.com uh, on Wednesday, I believe. Oh, I wonder if he thought he had the Sack Gem in it. That's fair. His line does make sense if there's a sack gem in this thing. 
So we're killing my outlaw here. I assume we're killing my thunderfields here. That's aggressive. Oh, it's lethal. Okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. So he's at 10. This is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I got them dead on the crack back if I transmog this dreadling. So I'm going to transmog the dreadling here. And do a polyberry pouch. That's fine. So now we go to 1. They attack with me. It's possible I should let him attack there, but the problem is copycat's a card that exists now. So, uh, not attacking with this doesn't do what you want, because this is going to turn into the Scarlet Swordsman. Which is just going to... So the Scarlet Swordsman here, when this attacks, the, the first time it attacks, it's going to deal damage equal to its power to my opponent and one of their troops. So it's going to deal two to my opponent and two to this. And even if they have removal here, they're still dead, because Stifling Sting, this card's so good. So I haven't talked about this card. This is one of my favorite cards in the new set. I talked about this in my set review. It does three damage to target opposing champion or troop, and if you damage the champion this way, interrupt each other action with cost three or less. So even if my opponent had like a strangle or a cheap shot here, this card would counter it. This card would counter it. What a what a clutch game. What a clutch close game. What's going on, Penta? Um, so I'm trimming a line of site as they kind of clumped up that game like you saw. I'm going to bring in extra Last Guard's Vengeance, extra Transmogrophade, extra Stifling Sing as like protection and reach. I'm going to trim the Thunderfield Elder. I'm not even actually sure if these should 100% be in the deck. Hey! Voltaic LV with the brand new Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you for that. I really do appreciate it. Welcome. Subs are the reason I'm able to do what I do. Welcome everyone to an extra bonus Sunday night stream. One of the upsides of being scummed out of the Pokemon tournament this weekend. Had had today to play Hex. Figured I'd close out the day with a little bit of stream, not the kids are in bed. Hope everyone had a good weekend. Hitting into game two here against the champion Thuraz, opponent Jin and Tonic. This hand's pretty reasonable. So we got Arcane Focus here. Let's just look at our top two cards of our deck and put one in our hand. And we also have two Ay Ayotachi. We have two coins, two ruby coins in our hand, however you pronounce that. This is a resource that does not make a temporary resource, so it basically comes into play tapped if you're a magic player. And it uh, you can also pay two and discard this card to um, cycle it. Uh, you can read about what happened at the Pokemon tournament on my website. I feel like we're going to talk about this a few times. So I'm going to add a command. There we go. There we go. Pokey Scum. Go ahead and click on that if you want. Um, I'll do that. I'll go ahead and play this Blamsmith out here. So Blamsmith is a 2-2. That we have a socket in it to make a valor. If you have a bunch of troops in your discard pile, you could scrounge three to make this a 5-5. Five, five. And then when it dies, it creates a blam sack. So the blam smith, blam sack, you know, flavorful. Yeah. Runier again. Still doesn't have the sacrifice gem on this Runier. That's so strange to me. I feel like against any ruby deck you'd want the sack gem. I guess maybe he figures like, hey, we're a transmog deck. I really don't want... The, the sacrifice gem against a transmog deck, so that, that could be completely fair. 
can play this out. Eh, I should have focused before I played that out, but realistically, I'm... Yeah, and these coins here, like, we are... We look like we're a little flooded, but these coins are so powerful because they give us something to do with our extra resources here. And not only do these coins give us a... Give us... Draw us a card, but they also give us a charge when we cycle them, too, which is awesome. Hey, Xbox, glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, this game's a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. So this weekend is the Hex CCS, their 5K cash tournament that happens uh, every other month at the end of each of their seasons. You have to qualify for that one. But starting uh, the weekend after that, on March 19th, they're going to have open open cash 1Ks every weekend. Wicked Web Spawn. Whenever you scrounge, which means do the extra thing to void cards into crypt, you summon two dreadlings. Sure. Sure. And so he just scrounged with this card, which means the Wicked Web Spawn made him some Dreadlings. The Open Cash 1Ks are sealed. The entry fee for them will be either uh, 1500 Platinum, which is $15 uh, USD, 15 USD, or... Um, Six booster packs plus $3, 300 platinum. So we attack with both of these. I'm assuming they're just going to take this. Yeah, so they take the four here. And this card, Lasgard Vengeance. So we have this green four here. Originally, this card costs eight, but it's a green four because its cost has been reduced because every time I attack with a troop, while this is in my hand, its cost gets reduced by one permanently. So we attack with two guys last turn, and we attack with two guys this turn. Oh. My god. Oh, we could die here, because I just played the wrong shard. I was talking and explaining what the card did. This card costs two, two ruby thresholds to play out. And, uh... Turns out I only had one, and I played a sapphire shard there when I could have played this well of innovation. So, we could have dealt four to my opponent and wrath their board. Now... Now we're not going to do that, and they're going to have a chance to attack us here. Probably, if they got some scrounge stuff going on, they're going to get to use this too, and hit us for a lot of damages. Please don't scrounge. Please don't scrounge. Please don't scrounge. God bless. Okay, so it turns out my horrible, horrible mistake has worked out very well for us, because my opponent not only did not kill us this turn, but they committed two more cards to the table. So, you know, never forget games like... TCGs, skill games, etc., etc. Have a have a plagued wind that deals four damage to you. Enjoy. Did you have fun? I had fun. Attack for seven. No NBD. Put you to three. That's cute. Oh, and this has scrounge. Okay. Opponent's doing stuff. I like it. They're almost dead on board. We have a lot of draws here. We got some redraws with these coins. An action. That's an action, right? Yeah, so I do... I cycle this. Do this. Yeah, we'll probably still play online occasionally. I don't know. I haven't fully decided yet. I'm playing online is tough, because, like, I, I like to play games to be competitive, and, like, if I'm not playing... If I'm not playing in paper, I'm not really doing anything competitive with it. And you're having trouble downloading the Hex installer. If, they're, if their installer is giving you trouble, uh, Stoic, just uh, search, um, search for the game on Steam and install it that way. Search for the game on Steam. Steam. Steampowered.com hex. You can use the Steam installer. Works great.
say it's medium. Again, the Thunderfield Elders. I feel like... I feel like I want these to be more two drops. We kind of get clunked up on threes. So I wonder if there's another speed two drop that I want in this deck. 10 out of 10 taking this Thunderfield. See so here, the Stifling Sting is just like another three. Like, it's a powerful card. We're not quite sure what our opponent's doing. Again, for those of you that aren't aware, Hex's Constructed Format just rotated last week. So we're kind of in that new, like, everything's a brew stage of the format. The first major constructed event is this coming weekend. Look at that. We drew a sting anyways. It's like mono, mono three drops in our hand. A few other people have been playing on the ladder uh, map, and they said it seems powerful. It's kind of an upgraded. Gob so Gobbler's not a two drop because Gobbler costs two resources, but you can't play it on the second turn of the game. Gobbler's like at minimum a three drop, and usually it's more than that even. Righteous Outlaw is an okay draw there. So I think I actually want to be resource efficient here and play a Lanupaw's site. It also allows us to trigger our champion ability. So our champion ability for three charges creates a 1 1 with flying and speed, which will trigger our Lascar's Vengeance a couple of times here. Yeah, Gobbler, Gobbler introduces awkward deck building restrictions, and it's not actually a two drop. No, I've repeated that a few times before, but that's true. Alright, so they're transmogging. Why is clicking cards so hard? Um, <clears throat> well, they turned us into a Quashford Shook, so we don't get to attack with it this turn, but that card's going to be good. Opponent notably missed a resource drop last turn as well. Dark Heart of Nulzan. That's annoying. So every turn, we're going to have to sacrifice a non-socketed card that we control. So we're going to start by sacrificing the Thunderfield. <laughs> Alright, what am I doing here? <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm going to play this and then attack with everything here. Because if he wants to block this, I get to Lascar's Vengeance him. That's unfortunate. So we hit him for four there. This is going to get to ready next turn. I'm just going to hold that for now. Awkward. Alright, I wonder if we're going to be able to burn them out or not. So this card... JVL Luso with the nine month subscription, three quarters of a year. Thank you for the continued support. I really do appreciate it. Transmog is a good pickup. It's going to let me turn this guy into something far less annoying. I should probably go ahead and just do that right now. Well, so a little animation you see here. When I play that Thunderfield Elder, it has a, de a prophecy deploy that the next action in our deck gets gets the line of text when you play this copy. So the next action that we draw is going to get played twice, basically. Uh, someone else mentioned, sorry, I was stuffing my face with the last of my, my food here. Um, someone mentioned the Escape Goat earlier, and that seems like a very reasonable card for this slot. There's... There's our Heart of Embers. All right, so let's play this. Uh, let's play this Plamsmith out here. Oh my gosh, we can scrounge this. This card, 
this card is just like everything you want in a two drop. It's like reasonable on the second turn of the game, and then you get to play it on like the fifth turn of the game like this, and it's just insane. So my opponent's down to nine here, and we've got two stifling stings in our hand, which each of these deal deal three damage to our opponent if we want them to. So opponents fumbling around here. We're both missing resources here, but uh, it's definitely much worse for my opponent than it is for us. Our deck's much lower curve than theirs is. This is a matchup where Sting is going to be insane. Like, their deck is just full of actions that cost three or less, so, like, deal three to them, counter their focus, or counter their bring to justice, or just, like, all these different things that this card can stop is going to be insane. <laughs> Hey, Tron Dragon, what's going on? So our opponent's got a little bit of a roadblock here in front of us, but they're at nine. Go ahead and play this this out. Um, hmm. There aren't anything in their deck that lets them interact for just a single resource here. I guess we just ship with these. Hey, City. Yeah, I think um, I think I might try to work some more some more evening streams into my regular rotation here. Some 9, 10 o'clock starts after the kids go to bed type thing. So our opponent's going to be dead just to our stifling things here. They play any sort of action. Right, yeah, so they're just going to be dead. So this dark heart comes into play using the last of the resources, but then these, uh, that had two draws on it? Oh, it was double prophecy draw card. When you play this draw card, I missed that. And that's fine. Fine, sacrifice that. Kill you with Stifling Sting. Dead you? Dead you? This was nice. We got to kill them with this and not show them we have Heart of Embers in our deck, which is ideal. Keep that information a little bit hidden. You can't sack the Blamsmith, it's socketed, Maddie. Alright, so Ruby's Favor is a card in our board that's here to hose Dark, Dark Heart specifically. It's not only can deal three damage to my opponent's face, but it can make them each sacrifice an artifact. Sam Coons with the 13 month resubscription! Thank you for putting up with me for so long, I appreciate it. Welcome back. Alright, so I don't think I want Transmog, or Cremates, or Lasgar's Vengeances. Man, the swap out here is really super clean. I just, like, bring in this last repost. So I've got three Ruby Favors as answers to Dark Heart. I wonder if that's enough. I might just want, like, a fourth Ruby Favor of the Reserves, honestly. Like, this Pyre Strike here is just kind of random. Maybe I'll swap that after. We'll try, like, Escape Goats over this card. And we'll put some a uh, fourth Ruby's favor in the reserves. For now, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave this extra apost out and just bring this transmog in. Yeah, let's do this. Let's give this a go. I think I want at least four ways to kill a kill a dark heart.
Uh, so wells only make thresholds if you already have a threshold, so unfortunately we're not going to be able to make Sapphire on one to lead on Thunderfields here right away, but all the cards in this hand are reasonable, so like, our turn, or like, go Ruby on one, and then our turn two will just be like, Seer into focus. Would Pirate Strike be worth against Kaigo and Crusaders? Yeah, it's definitely like, that's the slot it's there for, Chris, but like, we already have four Transmog to lean on in those matchups, so I think I'd rather just have the fourth Ruby's favor. Man, could you imagine if this was an escape goat right now and it's been like the best draw on our deck? Look, Matty, we've been, we've had Pikachu's and Pokemon for sub notifications long before I started playing the game. Might try boarding the new Scrounge double burn card. Also kills dark card. Nah, I think I'd rather just have a. I think I'd rather just have another Ruby's favor. What is a hex threshold? So thresholds are kind of like. Um, they keep track of like which resources you've played. So for instance, when I play this Sapphire shard out, I gain one permanent resource that stays with me forever, one temporary resource so I could use it right away, and then it gives me a charge towards my champion power and then a Sapphire threshold towards being able to play my cards out. Um, a good example of how hex cards work. So this, this hex card costs three resources to play and you're required to have at least one Sapphire threshold to play it out. An example of a card that takes multiple thresholds to play out is this card takes four resources to play and requires I to play two, two ruby thresholds to play it. It's kind of nice you still have a color system similar to what we have in Magic, but you don't have, um, you know, like the strictness of like having to tap specific lands that's super clunky and awkward and like having to keep track of those. When I play a resource out, it just gets tracked down here at the bottom of the screen, my total total available resources, and then the thresholds that I've played out from those resources. He was so intimidated, Professor. Wow, opponent missed a resource drop there. So, pretty sure we're just jamming with these, and like, I have like Verdict and Stifling Sting here. So, yeah, I'm just gonna pass the turn as opposed to jamming this Thunderfield Elder, because I feel like if they do anything, my opponent also left Counter Magic up there. So, like, just passing into them, passing into them seems fine. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna have to discard on my turn if I miss another resource drop. So, I'm just gonna draw. And then, crack with these. I think I'm willing to focus here. Hopefully we hit a resource so we can still hold up Sting. That's unfortunate. I'm gonna grab the Seer. So you play this draw card. Yeah, I wanna do that. I'd like to draw a resource. Man. That sucks. Uh, opponent's also missing though, so I guess that's fine. What champion is Diamond Sapphire? Uh, Dreaming Fox. It looks like the deck by opponent playing um, is the Diamond, the Diamond Sapphire Banks deck from last season. I think, I think Fox is a natural, natural move for that archetype. Um, so, my opponent doesn't have counter magic up now because they only have two resources available to them. So I'm going to go ahead and jam this line of plus sight in here. Feels like our best window for it. We're going to have to discard a card otherwise. They brought in Verdict. They brought in Verdict. When did the most recent set for Hex come out? Uh, the 28th. So, six days ago. There's, there's the dark heart, so we're going to have to sacrifice one of our cards here, but we're going to get to Ruby's favor to kill this dark heart, so we got that going for us. So, lose a card. And let's go ahead and play this Thunderfield here. Let's go ahead and play this Ruby's favor, which draws us a card. Each opposing champion sacrifices an artifact. Man. We are just both missing all sorts of resources. Maybe we'll add a shard to the deck, too. I think I'm just gonna bin. I'm gonna bend the Thunderfield Elder. Actually, the Dark Hearts, the Heart of Embers, are Reach, which I would kind of like to have. The opponent is still struggling along here, so this Arcane Focus was prophesized for them. So after they look at their top two cards and grab one of their choice, they'll draw an extra card. Did they hit a fourth resource? Ah, they win the race to the fourth resource here. They got nine cards in their hand here, so they're gonna have to bin two. We don't have a ton of pressure on the table, but like we have, we have enough. You should draw a shard. Quality sage advice from Matthew Pomonte. If we hit a non-slow shard this turn, we can like jam Righteous Outlaw with Verdict of the Ancient Kings up, which would be just excellent. Perfect. A, a shard that draws two cards. Sign me up. Go ahead and play this Righteous Outlaw here, which is almost certainly going to get meant by Counter Magic. They've been representing it a couple of times here. So 
we get to attack with all of these because my outlaw has speed. And we're gonna move to discard here. I think honestly, we're just gonna bend this psychic ascension. We're pretty, we're pretty far off from it from being able to play it. So this card costs 15 originally, and then every time you play an action, its cost gets reduced by one. So it's kind of like this sweet late game card. Oh jeez. Void each troop with toughness three or less. Yep, that's that would be all of my guys. Um want to transmog this? How many am I playing? I think it's 21 plus 4 coins, but I'm not 100% on that. So we'll play Heart of Embers here, and this card makes a Valor for us when it comes into play, and then we can use that Valor, and whenever we play a Valor, it deals 3 damage to something, so... We get to make a 4-5 and deal 3 damage to our opponent, which feels really good. If my opponent has a Dark Heart here, I'm going to feel a little bit bad, but at the same time... <laughs> this this card draws a couple cards, as it turns out. And this one's prophesized too. I guess we did draw a lot of Thunder Whatnots. Do they have a dark heart here? If they have a dark heart, we're going to sacrifice our heart of embers, which feels bad, but at the same time, they'll lose their glory on the way back. My opponent's getting pretty close to their champion power as well. For seven charges, my opponent's champion power creates an oracle song, which is a three cost draw two card here. Let's see what they're thinking about here. This is safe from Bring to Justice because it's Valorous. Silver Talon Adjudicator. Okay, so playing that to gain some life. Smart. do, however, have a, another copy of Heart of Embers here, which we can go ahead and Valor to protect it from Bring to Justice, you know? I guess there might have been merit to Valoring this one and then shooting this down, but, like, I feel like these are going to get hit by removal here at some point anyway, so I think I'd rather just, like, use all of my things as reach that I can. Oh, you know what? I should have shot this down. Because then I could have attacked with my 1-1 in the air. Yeah, that's reasonable. Let's pass the turn for now. Remember, we've got these Stifling Stings that draw 3 and then 4 cards between them. So even once we hit, hit start hitting some resources here and running a little bit low on gas, we're going to be able to gas back up with these. This deck's got some kick behind it. Alright, so there's the Dark Heart. Um, thankfully, we have this Transmogger Fade. Uh, if he attacks with this, I'm just taking the hit, I think. Hey, it's just Matt. My, my day has been. Go my day's gone swell. My day has gone much better than yesterday went. Set the bar low. So we're gonna Transmogger Fade this, which may or may not get met with some kind of counter magic. You know, it's very possible that I should have, I should have waited on this and just like sacrificed the bubble bot so that way I could protect it with Sting plus Verdict here. Wow, just nothing. Weird. Huh. Do I just like Stifling Sting this to like draw a bunch of cards? Yeah, I think I do. And just start attacking with this bubble bot. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of Swag Daddy. I, I talked about that been a, being a possibility. Alright, well, now we're gonna Stifling Sting you. Oh, wait. Oh, this doesn't... Oh. Oh, this is... This does not work how I want it to work. This doesn't work, because this... This is gonna interrupt both of these. Oh. 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 Whoops. Remember when we talked earlier about making mistakes with cards? Yeah, interrupts each each other card on the chain. So that also interrupted my Stifling Stig's ability to... <laughs> so I did get to draw the two other cards from my Stifling Stig. Uh... 
Better to learn that now when we're in the old, the classic gold bracket on the ladder. And we're up a game too. I'll just win the next game on the play. It's fine. It's fine. Take some of the suck out of the deck when the next game on the play. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna, let's just, let's just move on. Uh, we started streaming about half an hour ago. Hmm, play for another hour or so. I don't plan to stay up too late. Kids usually roll out of bed about seven o'clock, so about eight hours from now. Yeah, Dr. Dune, I can't say that I will ever realistically invest my time and money to go to a paper Pokemon tournament ever again, which is really kind of sad because the game, the game is a lot of fun and has a lot of depth to it. And I was really, I was really enjoying myself while playing it. And, uh, they're just, they're just, it's just not, not good. Um, so this hand doesn't have any Sapphire in it, but uh, if we run some shards off, it's going to be super reasonable. That's a diamond, which means they don't have a Thunderfield Seer on one, which is great for us. And there's there's our Ruby Threshold, or our Sapphire Threshold. God bless. Is Totem Trap? I feel like Totem Trap's still legal. He says as he gets Totem Trapped. <laughs> We're so good at this game! Oh, I should have played the Blamsmith. Oh, I should have played the Blamsmith. Oh. Should have played the Blamsmith. The more you know. That's fine. We deserve to lose this. We should have. We would have 10 out of 10 won, won that other game if I would have cast Verdict instead of the second Stifling Sting. Oh no, trans Okay, you know, Umber Tongue Scarn, I can I can live with that one. That one's okay for us. I gotta check how many shards run. I think we're on 25 with four focus. It might be 24 with four focus, but I feel like I'm playing 25. Feel like I'm playing 25. Um Yeah, I'm just gonna play this and then Valor this guy. Which gives it plus two because this card gets a power every time we play an action. I'm gonna crack for three here. <laughs> Opponent just once I'd like to not get completely hosed by a transmog. I mean, I'm not, I'm not complaining about it, you know? You do you. Ooh. Ooh, my kings have a verdict, you say. And deny this. So we did that pre-combat, so if they countered, we could fight and make this guy bigger. So dark heart this turn will be a little annoying. No, I made that command. Yeah, there's the dark heart. So let's let's set Ruby's favor off the top here. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Remember when we said this should have been another Ruby's favor? Pepperidge Farm remembers. A Valor, this one. He might trade here. You know, with the heart, two hearts in my hand, I probably should have just Valored this, because the next turn we could heart and then kill that. If he has another, another dark heart here, we're going to feel kind of bad. So we'd have been up three, five, have, our opponent would be at six right now if that transmog had been a fourth Ruby's favor. So like, things, those are the type of things you want to keep track of. Like, I said that that should have been one thing and then it, well, you know, it wasn't. All right, non-slow shard. That's a that's a slow shard. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna play this out. Could have saved the valor, maybe. I think the line was fine. Let's crack with both of these. I think I'm gonna play this heart of embers. I 
and the follow apart for next turn. I guess they have deny up here. Cycle shard prism deal. Makes me a valor. So if my opponent sticks another dark heart here, it's actually not the end of the world now because we can sack this and then play a second dark heart and then or a second heart of embers and then valor one of them and kill shoot down the dark heart. Here's your oracle song. This like scale of one to dead. This this got to be close to dead, right? No. Okay. Well. Well then. You gotta kill this, right? Alright, let's take a look at our deck here real quick here, now that we've played, played a couple of games. A ladder, gold four. Alright, climbing on up the ladder. Um, how many shards are we on for starters? Uh, how many shards are we on? We have eight, seventeen... We're actually lighter on shards than I thought, actually. This is eight, seventeen. We're only on twenty-three. Maybe I just want more shards in the deck. Maybe I'm just like cutting these for more resources. That doesn't seem like completely unreasonable. I'm on 15. I'm on 15 sapphire and 14 ruby. Yeah, I'm just gonna go up. I'm just gonna go up a shard and then. Do I want a third sting or a fourth Lenu pause site? Oh, that was 25? I'm 19. Yeah, it is 25. You're right. I'm dumb. Look, it's late. It's late. It's late. Yeah, I said 17, didn't I? Nope, wait. Look. We don't... We don't do addition when you're earning a master's in math. You don't. That's not that's not something that happens. What do we want? We wanted some goats. Is that what we were looking for? Wanted some goats. Fizzy Dragon with the six month three sub. Half a year of support. I appreciate you coming back again and again and again. So welcome. Uh, and we're gonna cut this for the last Ruby's favor, right? That's what we said. Dat blog post indeed, right? Right, just just right. I got an extra sting in the board. It's possible I want another site in the board for the grindy matchups, but it looks- I think we have, like, the grindy matchups on, like, lock between the stings and the verdicts and the pressure that we put them under. It's probably fine. Yeah, the experience yesterday at the Pokemon tournament was less than pleasant. I feel kind of bad having promoted- promoted Pokemon as a fun game to play competitively to people for the last little while. While, uh, after having played it having played it now being fairly disappointed in the experience ah this scrub scrub a love a dub dub let's go Tommy boy correct yeah it's not it's not even just that my opponent lied to the judge to get the results it's that on top of it that the result was as obscene as double game loss, the match is over, whoever won game one wins the match. What do I think of a Wildfire Soul the Battleground for their elk decks? Probably fine, like all the pieces are there. It seems like a deck where like if you're looking at everything that should exist, like you're like, yeah, this is probably a thing that should exist. Man, having this card turn two on the play seems dope. So this card, Whenever, whenever it diligences, so whenever it readies, it does one of two things. It either creates a Valor or turns into the Scarlet Swordsman. Who's the Scarlet Swordsman, you ask? Well, when he attacks, he deals damage equal to his power to your opponent and one of their troops. So if my opponent plays a two-drop here, which they just did, um, huh. So 
So now I have to decide. I kind of want to sting this turn so that way I can activate my champion power anyways. So I think I'm going to hold him. I'm going to hold him to deal deal more damage later. So let's do this. The, the downside to this line is if my opponent has a piece of removal next turn, they could kill this and then I never get to use its ability to remove something. The new experience Pokemon really feels a bit more lax and casual. Is that the case in paper? No, their competitive events are just as... Just as... The... I guess the rules are worse to find. Yeah, so we got punished for my line here. I guess I got kind of greedy or cute or whatever you want to call it. I probably should have just, like, jammed it down his throat. Like, used that card to kill his thing instead of wanting to trigger my Bumblebot. Would have gotten more value out of my thing here. I'm going to play this out. This is my second Ruby Threshold for the Heart of Embers here. I'm going to play my Blamesmith out. I'm going to go ahead and attack for, attack for one here. It sends up kind of a warning sign to Tom that, like, I didn't play out the Valor this turn, but... I think this is fine. It only works if the opponent has a troop. That's good to know. I mean, it makes sense, but it's good to good to verbalize that that statement of fact. Four butts kind of annoying. Means I can't kill it with Heart of Embers. I feel like my opponent's deck archetype likely doesn't play Bring to Justice anymore, so I'm just going to go ahead and Valor my Bumblebot here. I don't think Valoring this plays around anything. I feel like any any Bring to Justices that would be in their deck have likely been re replaced by Decree of Banishing at this point. Yeah, yeah, the Diamond decks are, are very reasonable still. So my opponent's going to 14 here, which is nice. If we get to ready with this, I'd be kind of surprised if we get to ready with this, but if we do, we have like 8 points of burn at our hand, plus potentially another Bumblebot coming up. Coming up the pipeline. Yeah, and like, like from the LGS perspective, like that's something like magic that's going to like drastically differ from location to location. Like, there's some LGSs that are like, you know, the average player is just like a GP grinder, and like there's other places where the average player is just like very far from a GP grinder. All right, well. Um, huh. So, we got to ready with this, which is insane. That never happens. Um. Yeah, I think we're just gonna go, like, Valor, shoot this. And then I'm gonna go Valor, this, shoot you. And then we're gonna go cremate, cremate. Crack you for seven. Play Thunderfield Seer. Thanks, Prometheus, right? I don't like a Hex as a mortal format. I've mostly been playing limited since things rotated because I, I really like draft gauntlets. And this limited format's been a lot of fun. Uh, we played a few, a couple matches of Immortal at the end of last week, but I haven't dove, dove into it a ton. We'll really, oh, we'll really be dipping into Immortal next week. Um, we'll probably play it one day this week, because I do need to write another another piece for the series I've been working on, but, um... Huh. There's no no good attacks here other than the Bumblebot, so we'll just ship for two in the sky. Yeah, I've actually got a, a Diamond Ruby Ardent build that we're going to play at some point this week as well. And I've just got like 4x Decree of Banishing in the main deck of that one. This Bumblebot, it's going the distance. It's going for speed. It's all alone in this time of need. Yeah, I think Diamond's Favor is excellent too, by the way. The card's very powerful. My recent Immortal experience is mostly filled with troll combo decks piloted by Andrude. Scale of 1 to dead, Tom. Where are we at here? Has to have hit removal for this card. Yep. Dead side of the scale. Alright, so. First things first. Extra Last Guard's Vengeance in. 
Extra transmogrifades in. The escape goat is just gonna get like mono brick wall on the ground. So that guy's coming right on out of there. I started following your content because my interest in modern is the best streamer consistently, so I figured it'd be interesting to bring mortal. Yeah, definitely. Um, just you know, priority goes to the the format that uh, plans to pay me pay me dollar bills the most, and uh, the CCS that's coming up is uh, standard and um, standard and draft for the top eight. So those are definitely what's getting priority. I don't think this is a stifling sting matchup, especially because um, the removal is decree of banishing, which is a constant, so stifling sting doesn't interact with that. So I think we're just going to, like, go up Transmogrifades and go up Lasgar's Vengeance and cut the Stings and the Scapegoats. You should watch, if you love troll combo decks, you should watch my archive from last week, if you didn't, of the, the Yodel burn deck in Immortal. We played we played a match against Andrew, and he combo killed us in games 2 and 3 with an infinite dreadling combo deck. Combo deck. Sands very reasonable. It's got Seer into Outlaw here. And Tom Mulligan, so. Good luck, Godspeed, Mr. Davis, Professor Yana. Transmogs, good pickup. Is Kaigu looking to I'm going to give it a try anytime soon. I'm not sure if that's going to make it on the docket for the streams before the CCS. There's a Might Singer of the Ages in your deck. All a judge and claim he conceded. <laughs> Alright, so this draws us a card because it was prophesized by... It was the cremate. The cremate that the... And this is why you should always focus before you attack. Because you can hit Lasgar's Vengeances and start ticking them down. Tested it, but I have to imagine this is worse than Daughter of the Poet in the deck that wants double diamond, anyways. Lead on focus here, like I mentioned, in case you hit a Lasgar's Vengeance. I guess I don't technically have double ruby for these yet, but you know, YOLO. Like, if we hit the double ruby, like this is the these are the type of the type of hand that could let us come back from anything. So we do need we do need more more ruby thresholds here. And Tom is dead anyways. Sorry, Tom. Oh, right back into the queue we go. It's firing quick tonight. Sure, it just like pushes your deck in an awkward an awkward it pushes your thresholds in like an awkward direction, I feel like. Hey, right, Sue, how's it going? <laughs> oh, it's great. 
All right, so unfortunately, so we've got we've got the goat here, the escape goat. Um, whoever names the cards that Hex must have a real good time with themselves. Uh, but anywho, we do not have a ruby on one, so unfortunately we're not going to be able to play that right away. Uh, we can go ahead and lead on Sapphire Shard into Arcane Focus, though. Uh, I think I'd actually rather have the Ruby Shard than another coin at this point, like the non-slow resource. Hey, that's that. That's uh, your problem. That's not your fault, Raisu. And you know, it is what it is. I was, I was thoroughly warned going into the Pokemon tournament that the average Pokemon player was a giant scumbag, and I chose, I chose not to listen. So opponents, opponents playing a dwarf deck, which is an archetype I'm actually kind of interested in exploring in this format. That reminds me, I need to put worker bot on the list of things that don't appear on the on-screen chat. It doesn't flood it. Consult the talents. This card costs seven and is triple mobilized so they can exhaust three troops they control instead of paying some of the resources for it and they draw three cards. Yeah, I'm told Yu-Gi-Oh! is much worse than Pokemon. In terms of people being scum. Let's just play Lanny Quasite, get some draws in the bank here. My opponent's gonna be able to play some artifacts and kind of go insane next turn. So these these dread technomancers, whenever they play an artifact, they get a dreadling. And this tech tician, again, they must have fun naming these cards, gives all of the robots plus one plus one till end of turn. And then Theros here can give all of his troops plus one plus one till end of turn as well, so. Huh, so kind of punished for my sequencing here. That's eh, fine. I'm actually, I'm gonna play this, and then we're gonna play Lanny Paw Site. Maybe I should play the Lanny Paw Site first. Alright, made a transmog. Let's do this. And then I think. Whoa! What a blowout! So they're doing three to me, and they interrupted my card that was on the chain. I'm gonna go ahead and transmog this nerd just in case just in case they make too many dreadlings next turn. So I wonder I wonder where their artifacts at. Alright, there we go. Chimera bot. Diligence, this gets one at random. Alright, so they're gonna hit us for a 10 ball here. Yeah, scale of one to dead. Probably gonna be pretty dead here. Let's go ahead and play this out. Grab a ruby. I think I'm gonna go ahead and valor this and shoot this. I think I'm just gonna pass the turn here. Yeah, I think I'd rather have the extra blocker just in case. We could just get burned out here though. Like we're at five and they've got like, they, they showed a stifling sting in their deck already. Yeah, that is an interesting side effect of copycat being in the format for sure. Let's focus, see what we get. Another focus, sure. Focus. Last Gar's Vengeance, sign me up. I'm gonna go ahead and play this on here and shoot their Dread Technomancer down. And play the Ayachi coins out. Which lets us do this. I'm gonna attack with these two in the air, which makes our Transmog castable next turn. Or makes our Last Gar's Vengeance castable next turn. I'm gonna play this Righteous Outlaw, which draws us a card. Chain 
damage, of course. Okay, Ho hopefully we don't get burned out here. Like, they could have, like, just, like, have a cremate in their hand already or a stifling thing and, like, find the other one and just go, like, pop, pop, kill us here. Hopefully they don't have a... Hopefully they don't have a, uh, what's it called here? A uh, Verdict of the Ancient Kings or a Deny. They could have a Deny, realistically. Huh. I just want to do that. Yeah, I think I do. Just gonna Blam Smith, and then we can Valor shoot down the Dread Technomancer here. Heart of Embers, just like, unchecked heart, just like, punches the clock and like, goes right to work. Um... I'm gonna be conservative and just attack with these two in the air again. I guess this is giving my opponent chances to, like, draw... Giving my opponent chances to draw, um, burn spells to kill us. It's actually kind of important to note we really don't want this to cost less than four, because as long as this costs four or more, my opponent can't stifling sting it. So if they don't kill us this turn and they don't have verdict or deny, we should be able to get them with this next turn. So we need some things to go right here, but I think we're in an okay position. Is a cremate? Nope, just a blamesmith. That's fine. It's a valor. So they've got. So we're not dead this turn. Yep. So we'll play last guard vengeance and then kill them. And dead. All right, so extra transmogrifades sound great. I don't know that Ruby's favor is really where we want to be in life. Like making them sacrifice a random artifact doesn't sound great. Extra vengeance seems fine. Extra sting seems fine. Uh, escape goats, like just getting brick walled on the ground again. And landing plus sight's probably a little bit slow. Let's give this a go. Pretty trim, like mostly fours here. Hope everyone's having a good morning, afternoon, night, wherever you're at in the world. Thanks for choosing to spend part of your day here with us. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a professional TCG player slash content producer. And you've found your way over to my Twitch channel, or possibly my YouTube channel in the future. If you're enjoying what you see in front of you, I'd encourage you to show a little support by using that follow button there on your screen. It doesn't cost you anything, and it helps other people find my work. If you're really enjoying what you want to see, what you're seeing, and you want to help me produce more of this wonderful content, you can do so by subscribing on Twitch or becoming a patron on Patreon. Both of those help support myself financially. Um, if you're looking for more of my content after the stream's done here tonight, you can do so on my YouTube channel, which is linked in the stream information. I archive all of my streams there, and I break them up by uh, game, by deck, and by format, so you can watch just the content that you care about. Uh, the last way you could support the stream is by supporting our sponsors. There's this wonderful code here for Hexpremel.com right above my head. Hexpremel buys and sells Hex TCG cards. So if you're going to buy some cards anyways, you can go ahead and do it there and use the code Jeff5 to save yourself 5% on your order, as well as doing some support for the stream. Hatch, Zealand, Monday evening. That's so weird. It's Monday night there already? Man, time zones are strange. Um, so I think I actually want to lead on the Ayachi coins here. I think Blamsmithing on two is more important than Thunderfield seeing on one. What does the opponent's hero do? The opponent's hero says every time they play an Underworld troop, they gain additional charge. And for six charges, all their troops get plus one, plus one till end of turn. You know, honestly... Do, do we need a 26th resource in this deck? Should I just, like, add add a Sapphire coin to the deck? Like, we're just, like, starved on resources every single game. We're playing 25 with 4 focus, so, like, on paper, we should be completely fine. I'm gonna Valor this. This is a 3-3 down Diligence. It gets one at random. 1-1 one, one in Flight, 1-1 one, one in Rage, 1-1 one, one in Life Drain, 1-1 one, one in Summon, a new Chimera Bot. I feel... I feel like there's a transmog in your future, Chimera Bot. Sapphire Coin is the worst coin. You're not... You're not wrong. You're not wrong. It's definitely worse than some of the alternatives. Naive Lackey. Enjoy. Play another one of these. Play this. Look at these Valors building up. We just have, like, triple heart in our hand right now. I think I like being a little bit aggressive here with this. This could be wrong. I'm happy to trade there. And they're probably happy to trade there, too, because, like, if we have Lasgar's Vengeance, like, letting us tick that up again and again and again is not going to be good for them. I 
Yeah, the games were not stumbling, we're doing well, so it's very possible we just want a 27 a 26 resource. And like the 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 like the cost of like adding non-slow shard, non-slow shard, non-slow shard. Alright, that could be anything, even a shard. Alright, well, I'll grab that, and then we'll play this, and then play this out. Uh, I'm gonna do this on here, and do this on. Yeah, we'll do this on here. I feel like we're gonna die now. If we would have hit a non slow shard to play the Heart of Embers this turn, we probably would have been well off, but. The Sapphire Coin is fine. I've, I'm using the Sapphire Coin in a couple of different decks that uh, are like medium fine. As Midnight Gatherers in play, we really don't have archetypes yet, Sin Pure. Like, it's still very, very early in the season to try and, like, figure out, like, what. Oh, jeez. Need to hit a non slow shard next turn so we can play this plus Valor and shoot this down. Alright. Well, that's what we asked for. Well, if we live through this next turn cycle, things will be looking up. Um, I think I want to make this a 3-3. Shoot that down. This way, all three of these can live through combat if they... I guess they can give it plus two, plus two, because this can give one, one, and this can give one, one. Let's see here, and he's up to 12 charges, so I'd be pretty surprised if he doesn't, like, go dreadling, dreadling, this plus this, like, crack us for a bunch here. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we're getting, like, cracked for a lot. Yeah. How many things are coming across here? Just all of it, huh? So if we block here, and this has me playing action, this was Valor. Alright, and then this goes here, and this goes here, and then we take 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, like I'm taking a bunch here. I think I want to just throw this away to gain 3. Yeah, let's do this. And you know what, I could have taken one more damage and had this kill something that wasn't a Dreadling. Yeah, that was probably that probably would have been worthwhile. All right, let's play this out. Let's play this, which gives us two triggers, so we can shoot down this guy that still hasn't made dreadlings. So we can shoot down this guy. Should have killed the tech, maybe. Like then I wouldn't be able to kill. Uh, I guess he doesn't have quite. Then there would have been a chance that I wouldn't have been able to kill the other thing. attacking with anything here I feel like I feel like the answer to that question is no for at least a turn we're, we're just gonna get last guards vengeance and die here but change course sure I think they're saying I should have killed the dreadling with the heart of embers trigger which is debatable a solution big old lamb smith sure Not, you're not wrong. Triple Embers is real good. So they've got two Valors in their hand here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my Heart of Embers with this, I think. So these are going to go one, two, three. The leftmost will be added first. So I want my first one on the chain to target him. So that way we're going to target this. I think this works the way I want it. So this is going to kill this. Yeah. So this will die and create a blam sack. And then this will hit my opponent, which will kill the blam sack. Okay. I was at six standard meta feeling. Uh, I haven't played that many games yet, Technophy. And, and we're still, it feels like we're still very much in the point where, like, people are just, like, kind of trying stuff, which is good. You know, it's, like, to be expected. So we actually don't have that many Valor producers left in our deck. 
kind of wish I would have saved one of the one of the Valors from one of these first two Blamsmiths I played. My kingdom for Lasgar's Vengeance. You know, I probably should have Valored. Should have Valored the Bumblebot, actually. Sure. Okay, they're out of cards. That's good for us. Are they attacking with everything is the question. I guess this is a 4-4 now as well. Wow, no ship with the squad. I was expecting a ship with the squad there. I'm just going to keep poking them in the air here. So this is five turns. This is four if I attack with both. And I guess we just go for the four turn clock. I've not tried Blood Diamond Ruby at all. The shard base, the shards, the shards that we have to support a base like that are not consistent to say the least. Oh, I put it's dead to another heart of embers. Yeah, state the obvious. First one to Alasgar's Vengeance wins. So Dingle turns my troop into a Dingler while it's still on the chain. <laughs> oh, you know. Some days you're the heart of embers, other days you're the dingle, what can I say? Get donged. Dong da dong dong dong. It's a good pickup. Casual draw three. Looking for some breach here, I assume. Okay, resource. Yeah, plenty of chump blockers here. They could find removal for this. Concede. Alright, dead. Just rolling our way up the ladder here into gold three. Got ourselves a true heart skirmisher. Cue it on up, shall we? That's just queuing quick. Love it. Even with three pairs of well, the well, yeah, the wells make it incredibly awkward. I think. Realistically, the ceiling on the number of wells you're allowed to play in most decks is like six, and even that's pushing it. Are we increasing the shard count now? No, so I feel like increasing the shard count is like like you shouldn't you shouldn't make changes to your deck when you're running statistically below average to try and make up with it. Like with four copies of Arcane Focus and 25 resources, we should be hitting resources one through five with a very reasonable amount of consistency. It doesn't mean you're always going to hit it, but with, with some amount of consistency, we should be hitting them. Righteous Outlaw looking real hawkward here against their, their pair of 1-1s. One Lasgar's Vengeance, good pickup. Yeah, no blocks here. If they don't have a vengeance in hand, we're gonna be pretty pretty happy with this sequence from them. Um hmm. I don't want to sequence this here. Oh, you know what? This is actually really good for us. We get to play this, and then we get to valor this, and then hit the champ power, and then our Lasgar's vengeance takes all the way down to four here. We can attack with everything. 
Yeah, if, if we don't get Lasgard Vengeance out of them next turn, we should be pretty good to go. Because, like, they're obligated to remove this, I think, because they don't just want us, like, generating infinite powers. That trade for us sends me the message that my opponent does not have a Lasgard Vengeance in hand currently. Yeah, for sure, Tron. And if you're going to play the campaign stuff, too, you're in the Discord chat. Make sure you uh, ask around. And there are a lot of people, myself included, have extra commons and uncommons we can ship to you. And and four cost Lasgars is the best cost, right? Yeah, if my opponent has resources up, four cost is best. But if they're, if they're tapping down like this, we could just, like, you know, how low can you go? Wow, that's good for us. Yep, take six, down to 11. Get to ready with this. I think I wanna just make a Valor here because I'm gonna kill these guys with Lasgar's Vengeance, so. Yeah, 10 to 10, let's Valor this guy. And then uh, attack for six here, which cuts this down to a two cost. Let's go ahead. Oh, I have to play the coins out here to get our second ruby threshold, of course. I'm gonna play Lasgar's Vengeance, which is four to each of these and four to our opponent. So I don't think they'll be able to kill us from 11 here, but, you know, we'll see. really interesting in this deck it gives you like multiple bodies to let trigger things like uh trigger things like um uh lasgar's vengeance and it generates a valor so i'm kind of really kind of interested in trying that card out <laughs> 10 out of 10 taking the draw three Do I want to offer this trade? Yeah, I think I do. They have another Valor in their hand, so they can make this a 3-3 otherwise. I feel like they're pretty obligated to take this trade. All the Talons is pretty good. Okay, so there's their draw three. Another Warp Steel. I think we only have one more... Yeah, pretty sure I only have one more... Um, one more Lasgar in the main. That's really interesting, Klutz. Yeah, maybe that's something worth exploring. I think I want to hold up Stifling Sting here, as opposed to playing the Focus or the Thunderfields here. I feel like they're going to play an action of some sort next turn, and the Sting's going to hit them for three and counter it. Yeah, I'm just going to Stifling Sting this. So I get my one for one guaranteed, spend my resources. If they have like removal for this, I'll feel a little bit bad, but like that's fine for us. It's like hitting them to three here feels pretty profitable. We're only one resource off of making another Bumblebot here. Yeah, that's some dread things. So they're attacking for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. Eight. We knew one of their cards was a Valor. They can't hit with everything because they'll be dead on the crack back. Hmm. Okay, just no blocks here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm gonna go to five. Just try and find another sting. Just close the game out that way. Escape goat, you say. Survey says. Uh, yeah, Heart of Embers does it, right? Yep, we have a resource here. Yep. 
play the Valor that this makes and then deal three to my opponent. Beware the Buzz Tech Innovator. That's, that's hot. Extra Stifling Sting seems good. Extra Last Guard's Vengeances seem good. Uh, scapegoat seems like it's just another matchup that's going to get walled. Transmogrifade seems fairly unimpressive. Uh, probably don't mind a repost or two here. Cremate seems excellent. I'm going to trim an Outlaw, actually, and bring in another repost. This guy gets brick walled a little bit. This guy's probably just, like, not very good in this matchup, actually. Just went like this. The Psychic Ascension, and... Random Crimson Bolt? Yeah, let's do that. Let's see how that feels. I think this is okay. I feel like most of the time we're not going to get aggroed out in this matchup and we just want to like make our first few resource drops here. That could be incorrect. Like again, not 100% sure on like all the cards my opponent's playing. Do you think you'd put Electrofryer 2 in the side? I don't feel like Electrofry is solving a problem that Lasgard's Vengeance isn't also solving. So how did the Pokey tournament go? Check this out. You can give that... Give that a read and determine for yourself how the Pokemon tournament went. TLDR, not great. Kill this, draw a card, draw last card's vengeance, attack for one trigger, last card's vengeance. Rats! The power of positive thinking was not good enough. Opponent's just gonna Valor this next turn anyway, so like happy to offer this trade here, I think. Deal. We effectively traded one for one there, because like this drew a card. And, like traded with both halves. Yeah, I'm gonna scrounge this and kill their guy, just to keep some pressure off the table. And this also lets us activate our champion power. This means we can stifling sting next turn if they play like a or something. <laughs> As it goes, Zubrid. Again, I'm just gonna take my value on this while I can. Just like hit you for three, take my take my one for zero basically. My one for one that threes you, however you want to look at it. Enjoy the look of the shards in my hand. I mean I still plan to play plenty of magic. Enough magic? I don't know about plenty. Plenty is probably a strong word. I plan to play enough magic to keep up on things and to work on fun things in modern. Ah, Sun Soul Phoenix. I think the judging is actually pro Speaking to people who have played in multiple Pokemon tournaments, it seems like their judge program and the methods that they use for, um... What's the word I'm looking for? The methods that they use for discouraging cheating and following up on things like that are very lax in general, especially coming from a magic background. It doesn't seem like something I really want to be a part of. Remember when we thought about adding a shard? I mean, I did also keep a five shard opener that time without any coins in it. So, like, mostly on me. Ooh, prepare yourselves. The Coyotes are coming. Watch, like, all of these prophesies onto Elasgar's Vengeance that we never get to cast. Sends the beats. Stifling sting, all right. A little foxy up in here. 
wonder if the thread is visible again yet. The moderators told me... Yeah, I don't think you could see it. It just says removed. I guess the comments are still here. There's the thread. Oh yeah, the, the thread the thread got deleted. That's no no if ands or buts about that. It would it's not even just about being anal about the rules, it's that people like apparently like shuffle cheating is very commonplace among the people that play the game a lot. Like, um, do I have a deck of cards? I think, I don't think I have any decks of cards near me, which is odd. Uh, I have unsleeved cards, but I don't have a sleeved deck of cards to demonstrate. So, something that's apparently very common in po among Pokemon players is what I would refer to as open face shuffling, where they shuffle the cards in front of them like this, and as they shuffle, they fan the cards out while they're looking down so they can see which portion of the deck the cards are in that they're putting into their deck. Which, which is cheating, like, knowing, knowing the location of any card in your deck means your deck is not sufficiently randomized. Just, you know, in case, in case anyone was wondering, we would define that as cheating in any reasonable game. Alright, so, my opponent's gonna go trade, trade, and take 5 down to 11. I think I'd rather take the Lanupaw's site here. Rather than a stifling sting. This could be wrong. They've just got they've got so many cards left in their hand here. I had I had two out of five opponents shuffle in that manner when um when I played against them. And it's unfortunate because like a lot of games of Pokemon go really long because there's a lot of sequencing decisions and a lot of shuffling and searching and stuff like that. So, like, if you shuffle your opponent's deck every time they do something, it's gonna it's gonna cost you time and you're gonna go to you're gonna go to time. But uh, you know, against the people that were that were cheating while they were shuffling, obviously I was shuffling their decks. Correct. You're not wrong, Dyer. Like the digital format, aces. This is a Phoenix on defense. Are you just gonna like play three phoenixes and kill me? All right, sweet. So they've got a bit of a phoenix-shaped brick wall here, but we do get to land a punch. So the the phoenix-shaped brick wall makes me really happy that I picked the site up here, because we're gonna we're gonna need some velocity to punch through this thing. So this phoenix is a four-two, but it's valorous, so it's a five-three now, and they can. Void six actions from their crypt to replay this card. So they have plenty of actions here. One, two, three, four, five. That's four, five. So they could almost replay their Phoenix. All right. I'm going to Stifling Sting my... Ooh. Ha. Huh. Could Stifling Sting their Phoenix here? Yeah, that seems profitable, actually. Yeah, let's Sting their Phoenix. And then we can Champ Power here. I wonder if they have, uh... Yeah, they have a Repost here. That's unfortunate. I think I'm just gonna Sting their Phoenix again. So this Sting isn't going to resolve. Because this Sting is going to counter everything else. Nope, there's no, there's no ads on my blog post. Very, very simple. So, this is unfortunate that, like, I have to re-sting the Phoenix. Because if I sting them, it's gonna... Oh! Oh, that didn't really work out how I wanted it to, because they still get to keep the sting. Right. Hmm. I think that's still what I have to do there. Unfortunate to have hit running shards. Now they get to play the sting and draw a card off of it and kill one of my tutus. And get their Phoenix back. Huh. Yeah, maybe I should have just stung them and left the phoenix there, and then they don't get my sting. It card's really awkward in, in Counter Wars. A 
So they're gonna sting one of my guys or sting me. Probably one of my one of my one of my gentlemen or gentlewomen here. Yeah, stifling sting. Blam Smith down. They're gonna return their Phoenix to play. Yes, stolen cards do go to their crypt. Uh, attack for one. Alright, that draws us a card at least. That's a cremate. Um, attack. Similar to magic. Yep, you take three additional turns. How do champions power works as hex? You just to make hasty flyers whenever you want. So... Whenever you play a resource and certain other cards in Hex, it says gain a charge here. And there's a separate counter down in the corner here and up here for my opponent that um, give you charges or that count your charges. And then each of your champion powers have different charge requirements. So this cost me three charges and requires I played an action this turn to make a 1-1 hasty flyer. Uh, three total turns. So turn zero, turn one, turn two, turn three. It does, it does, in fact, have that benefit. wonder if he's going to remember his Phoenix this turn. I, I'd, pref I'd prefer he didn't, but, you know. If he remembers his Phoenix exists, we should lose this game. That's real bad for us. Yep. Uh. All right. Um. Huh. I guess like cremate his dome here. Probably. Pass the turn. Casual draw four. Is that draw five? No, yeah, draw four. Okay. Yep. Lots of scorches. Where are the odds he doesn't have a way to interact with the sting, right? Like, pretty low. Well, we are in the business of making him have it too far behind to play around anything. One more to close it out tonight here, I think. It's almost midnight here. About time to go to bed. Appreciate everyone tuning in and hanging out here for our Sunday evening stream. Um, man, just infinite people playing Theros tonight. This champion didn't strike me as being particularly powerful, but a lot of people trying it out. I'm gonna mulligan this. It's got, uh... We need double ruby. Like, if one of these sapphires was a ruby so we could, like, cycle this Ayachi coins instead of depending on it for a threshold, I think this hand would be fine, but... I think we want to play catch and release with this at seven. Yeah, six is much better. 
Okay, another Blood Theros deck. You're not wrong, the real Colonel. That being said, I don't, I don't picture myself ever spending time and money to attend a paper Pokemon event ever again. Like, you know, traveling. Anyone who's traveled to play a, you know, anyone who's just, like, traveled to general, like, will, knows that it's not, it's not cheap. Like, that, you know, the weekend that was, uh, ruined by both a, a crappy player and, you know, a poor judge configuration, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, cost me 150 bucks, which is not, you know, not nothing. Looking for a deck to climb the ladder with. Is this a good deck, or should I spend my plat on other cards? I think this deck seems super reasonable. Fair, fair warning. Haven't played a ton of matches with this deck to date yet. You know, format's still new, and I've been playing a lot of limited. But um, this deck is based on a deck that was doing well in the previous standard season, so I'd be very surprised if this isn't isn't reasonable. All right, what do I want to do here? What does this do? A spider enters play under your control. It gets plus one, plus one. I think I want to just pass the turn here. I could like transmogrifade this and like champ power, but like even if I transmog this, the average two drop, my one ones aren't going to be able to attack it anyways. Usually the time is more valuable to me than the money. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. I've definitely, I've definitely been slowly getting to that point in my life where it's just like, man, you took, you took away a day, a day and a half for me. Like that was a day and a half that I was like, you know, traveling and playing this tournament and then sitting in a hotel waiting for other people to finish the tournament because I dropped early because I had a poor experience. Like, just un unpleasant all around. Yeah, and honestly, like, like, that was the point of my post. My post was, the intention of my post was to hopefully spark discussion among people in the Pokemon TCG community that are, like, capable of driving that change and, like, making it happen. Like, there's a reason why I didn't, like, call out the person that was an awful human being by name. Like, it wasn't, the, the goal of the post wasn't to, like, flame one jerk. It was to hopefully say, hey, we could change and improve this. I come for six here. Not quite sure what my opponent's deck is doing. They look to be a little bit flooded. I'm going to play this Blamsmith out, and I'm going to hold this Valor for a turn, because if we hit a shard for the Heart of Embers next turn, we can heart and then start Valoring and Fireballing things down. There you go. Pentachills with the command. So Dread Factory here. They can exhaust one or more troops they control. Add Conquest counters to this. The start of turn, there's five or more counters. You get two Dreadlings. This week is 110% all all hex all the time. Um, probably still gonna play. Eh, I might play Skyrim one of the days this week. Might play some Skyrim, some knife, get some knife cat in my life. Use an intro video for. Whoa! What a dagger! Opposing troops is minus one, minus one. Rough. I liked my troops. All right, there's the non-slow shard that we were hoping to draw. I, they, I, they asked for a new player video. That reminds me, I need to... I actually have a script written for a new player video that um, another content producer asked me to create for them. So I need to follow follow up with them and find out if they're still planning to do that or if I should just take the script by, and run with it myself. So I'm not 110% sure what my opponent has going on on their side of the table, but it seems like they're, like, kind of troop-based, so, like, more Lasgar's Vengeance might be okay. Transmogrifade doesn't seem particularly good. They don't seem like they have really high-impact scary threats. I'm just going to bring in one Stifling Sting and one, uh, one extra Lasgar's Vengeance here and just see how that feels. When, when in doubt, when you're playing a proactive like like what I'm playing here, if you're not 100% sure what your opponent's doing, a less is more type philosophy is generally ideal. And it looks like our opponent uh, conceded, actually. I do also have I have this. It's a it's a written article how to how to hex. You should check check that out. Um, yeah, let's play one more. We only played one game there.
Ooh, Torn is playing a Takahiro, which is a three charge champion for double blood threshold. Sacrifice a troop, draw a card, and gain three life. Um, yeah, seems super reasonable. Our opponent has on display here. You can see the background is different. Hex now has um, custom battle boards that you can purchase. This is the first of those. There are a thousand platinum in the store. You can buy them in the shop, or you can also um, earn them through some events like the 1K Clash Cash tournaments. Are going to have a special Hero Fall battle board you can earn. Okay, no play on two for my opponent either. Hopefully, my Righteous Outlaw doesn't uh, doesn't suffer from a cheap shot here. So, Righteous Outlaw. This is one of my favorite cards in the new set. It's very powerful. I think all the Ruby Aggressive decks should be playing some number of this card. It's a 2-1 with speed that he diligences, which means when he readies at the start of our turn there, he either can create a Valor or become the Scarlet Swordsman. And the Scarlet Swordsman, when he attacks for the first time, he deals damage equal to his power to an opposing uh, the opposing champion and an opposing troop. Oh no! My Righteous Outlaw has been butchered! Yes, the clashes start on the 19th. So this turn, um, now, okay, so before I was just going to jam the Righteous Outlaw and cremate my opponent to make a Bumble Bot, but I think I'd rather get the Thunderfist here going here. Hey, Moondress, your catch was just the tail end of the stream. My day, my day is going swell. Serious question, why is it that MTG players are still so standoffish about Hex? It seems they're not getting the love it really deserves. Uh, so, so TCG players as a whole... Um, TCGs are expensive, right? And like magics, magics like extra expensive compared to compared to most TCGs. And when you spend a lot of money on something, you start to feel like uh, pot committed is just the best the best term I can use for it. You start to feel like you're you're, you're pot committed to the product, the product that you're using and you're invested in. So that means. You know, when someone else talks about something like Hex, that's like a direct competitor, in a sense, to, to Magic. People are like, oh, you like Hex more than Magic, and I'm really tied up and invested in Magic, so it's it's a personal offense to me that you're enjoying this other thing that's similar that could possibly replace this thing that I've invested a lot of time and money into. Sunk cost fallacy. Look at that. There's a technical a technical term for it. I've heard that terminology before. Sounds fastic. Let, let's use that. Sunk cost fallacy. Uh, again, not quite sure what's going on on the other side of the table. Um, uh, I think I'm going to hedge and just... Uh, I'm going to cut these scapegoats this time. And I'm going to bring in Elias Vengeance and the Stinging Shot. And, like, not to mention, like, there's a lot of people in, in the world that, like, even if they don't feel pot committed to magic, like, you know, people, it, it's a big time commitment to, like, do well and play play a game well and, um, and like, learn a new card pool and stuff like that. And there's people that they just don't have time to learn a second game in their life. And I, I, that is the opinion. When people tell me that, I, I, I have nothing but the utmost respect for them when they're like, no, nah, I just, I'm, I can't get into Hex or I can't get into Pokemon because I just, I just don't have time to. Like, Magic's the only game that I like playing Magic and I don't want to learn a new game. And, like, that, that's great. Like, I'm, I'm an adult with time commitments. I completely, completely understand that. Um... What I don't hate are the people who are just like, well, it's, it's worse because it's not magic, and they've never actually played it. They're just very frustrating people to talk to. So you know, it is. It is what it is. At the end of the day, you know, you enjoy you enjoy hex. You should play hex. You enjoy magic. You should play magic. Huh. I'm gonna be greedy and cycle cycle these coins, I think. Kinda looking for some more action here. Honestly, digital platforms in general are infinitely more convenient than playing in paper. And they're less like cost prohibitive. Like, you know, I'm gonna play the 5k this upcoming weekend, and I'm not going to have to travel an obnoxious amount to get to it. Like, that's huge. Like, 
this Pokemon tournament that went poorly for me this weekend, that went poorly because of a player that lied and a judge program that wasn't able to handle it. So, like, in addition to the travel costs that I had for that tournament that won't exist for a digital card game, the reasons why the tournament went poorly for me just won't exist in a digital card game. Like... So... We're gonna go ahead and Blamsmith here, I think... Yeah, I'm gonna Blamsmith and then Valor the Blamsmith and then hit this. And then I hit the champ power and attack them for one. It's a little awkward that I was greedy and cycled the coin, but I think that worked out for the best. I don't know, we'll see. We'll probably like miss our miss our Ruby Threshold for the rest of the game and feel real bad about ourselves, but it is what it is. <laughs> I am looking forward to the day where, hex they optimize their engine enough that they can get on, on tablets and mobile phones, so I think that'll help bring a lot of extra people into the game. I'm gonna go ahead and block here. I'm not quite sure what he could have that could savage me. Ah, look at that. Just call it like I see it. In instant regret having cycled the... If you had to compare this to a magic deck, what would you compare it to? It looks a little bit delvery to me, but I'm not 100% sure what's going on. Um, a, if you're familiar with legacy archetypes, I think drawing a parallel to the blue-red delver burn deck in legacy would be the closest thing to it. It's not quite a, a full-on tempo deck because it doesn't play a plethora of counter magic and interrupts, but it does, it does play some of them, and a lot of the cards it plays are reach in some sort of form. A Delver archetype is definitely uh, the closest thing that I would draw a parallel to, but it's definitely closer to um, one of the more uh, burn-based Delver decks rather than a tempo or control-based. Deploy, conscript a troop with cost one. Okay. And you know what? Honestly, I, I should probably thank Magic Online for being awful in a way. <laughs> it's just another Devil Ruby card. My greed. The punishment for my greed never ends. Um... Uh, because uh, the only reason I started playing Hex is because Magic Online was, you know, miserable engine to play on. And, like, the more time I spend actually playing Hex at this point, I genuinely enjoy Hex more as a game than I enjoy Magic. Like, Magic's designers have kind of let me down with the last few sets, especially as far as standard is concerned. And Modern's been kind of medium with all the, the bands and, like, the lack of ma and the lack of bands in some cases. And so... I've really enjoyed the the formats that I've been playing in Hex. I've played in Hex for three, four. This is my fourth standard iteration in Hex. Their fourth set release that I've played for three, four, five. Yeah, now six. Um, I've really enjoyed pretty much all of it. Ah, there we go. And like, and that's coming from someone who's like, I'm, I'm pretty, I've been pretty heavily invested in magic for a long time here. Like I, I spent, I've played, I've played approximately 1700 matches of sanctioned magic in the last four years. Um, you know, competitively, like I've flown around the country and like driven dozens of hours in cars on single weekends. And it's, it's nice. It's nice. I, and, you know, as someone who, like I said, has a big investment into Magic, this game is, is very good, and their designers have been doing a better job than Magic designers have been of the late. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have a hero fall here, since we have a Heart of Embers in play and in our hand. This is going to be our last, um... Our last uh, match of the night here. I'll be back on sometime tomorrow. Usually I'm on in the afternoons during the weekdays. I think I'm going to be pushing my schedule around here again soon and adding some regular weeknights coming up, though. I kind of like this. During the day, I stream while, you know, one or both of the kids are awake, and it kind of gets hectic and chaotic and loud, and it's kind of nice to, to stream when it's just kind of peace and quiet here in the evening. Uh, no blocks here on your 4-4. Just like, use my life tool as a bit of a resource here. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and play this Lasgar's Vengeance here, which does 4 damage to my opponent and each of their creatures. The battle board even has a different sound in the background. It's so soothing. Aspect of the squirrel. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and transmografade this in response. She turns it into a copycat, which then becomes a 4 4, which then gets killed by Lasgar's Vengeance. The card, the card is very powerful. So the the payoff, the payoff is very powerful for for Lasgar's Vengeance. The awkward part is like like if you draw Lasgar's Vengeance in the mid game when you can't play it for eight, like it's huge. Like it definitely comes at a cost. When you have these in your opening hand, they are very very good and tough to beat. Uh, it actually doesn't matter there, Talrand. Because the only troop it could turn into is Copycat, which means it was going to die to Lasgar's Vengeance either way. I guess it could matter in a world where he returns this, they return this directly to play. It looks like we're going to have this game either through attackers or with the second Lasgar's Vengeance that we have here in hand. Pretty successful e first evening on the ladder with the Bombus Valor deck. Um, if you want to get a deck list for this yourself, it'll be posted Excuse me, in the YouTube archive. And it'll, it's also, if you look in the stream information, there's a big button that says says hex decks so you can check check that out there uh, with that i'm gonna go ahead and sign off uh catch y'all around i will likely be back on uh tomorrow afternoon but as always you can follow me on uh twitter and twitch for notifications when i go live uh catch y'all around and uh thank you as always to all of our wonderful resubs and we had one new sub this evening as well so thank you the subscribers and the patron of patreon y'all are what enable me to do what i do and i really appreciate you all